They're combing the streets. Searching house to house. If they arrest you two, they will take you to their headquarters, and you will not return. I'm more concerned with a six-foot cat man who's got claws that can cut through vibranium alloy. By my count, that makes two super soldiers loose in Paris. Three. Counting you. And that's two too many. I'll be there before the sun rises. Before the Germans, before that American. The Eye of Force has been found. Please, just stick to the rooftops. Be careful. Stand was on me. When am I not? It's better if I tackle this one alone. You may encounter some obstacles. That won't be a problem. Our cat friend is definitely here too. By the look of things, he's not very far ahead. The American boy is right on your heels. Who the hell are you? If you wanted us dead, we'd be dead. So what do you want? Answers. That's far enough! Stay out of my way! Stand aside! I do not take orders from anyone! I don't have time for this. Neither do I. a really immersive game experience, the characters and environments have to work together harmoniously. We can't just drop believable characters into a less than convincing world. So we need to start with authentic and densely detailed environments as the setting to our story. And look, because part of our story is set in 1940s occupied Paris, we needed the word world to have a really believable and visceral level of detail and grit, as you can see here. So Roman, why don't we focus on the ground here for a bit? Now look at that. That's an amazing amount of detail. It would have been nearly impossible to get something this complex to run in real time without the new features in 5.4. So, Kim, let's talk about some of the levels of detail that we're seeing here. Sure. So, we're talking about Nanite's new adaptive tessellation feature. So, whilst Nanite lets you create environments like you're seeing here of incredible detail, the memory requirements can become impractical to realize for such a level of complexity across a huge level without the need for lots of instancing. And we thought that was a challenge and we wanted to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so Colin, let's actually strip this scene right down to the dirt so folks can see what we're talking about. So, see how simple, this is relatively simple ground plane. Actually, let's, um, let's show the triangles so you can actually see what's there. Just a few hundred triangles. Let's pop it back to the beauty render view. Um, but with this new dynamic tessellation capability, we can actually displace that simple geometry and create new three-dimensional geometry of the quality that you're used to with Nanite. With nothing more than layering tile textures and using shader logic, you can make incredibly complex effects. So instead of me trying to explain it, <laughs> let's get Colin to show the magic and uh, let's see a transformation of this face. This technique allows you to see an unprecedented level of geometric detail but it's also memory efficient and can be changed dynamically in the runtime of your game. So things like footprints or tire tracks or even supernatural <laughs> effects, if you such want, some would want them, can be visualized. And just to show how this ge simple geometry has now been transformed, let's have a look at the triangle view again. There you go. What you expect from Nanite. So it's a really, really smart, interesting technique to actually get detailed in the, into the games without crazy, crazy amounts of geometry. Let's switch it back to the uh, detail view. Thank you. Um, and of course, as you can imagine, this technology isn't just useful for the ground and for the ground terrain. It applies to every detail in the environment. So let's fly over to that pile of objects on the left over there, for example. 
and Colin Welly well, do. Can you kill those headlights for me? Cool. Thank, thank you. Okay, so imagine our challenge. We're trying to authentically recreate a harsh winter in occupied Paris. That means every prop, every object, every detail, every rooftop needs to be realistically blanketed in snow. So now let's show how we can dial up the snow accumulation on these objects, right? And of course we can dial it back as desired. It's making me feel chilly actually. Yeah, actually it's a little cold up here. Or maybe it's just um, uh, <laughs> And remember, of course, like Kim said, thanks to this technology, this is all actual geometry. So you can see how tools like these would really empower even a small team to art direct and set dress their environments dynamically. It enables our artists to create a series of layers in the environment and then build up the complexity layer by layer by layer. Now, speaking of set dressing, let's go check out that fire barrel over by the watchtower we saw earlier. Yeah, that's the one there. And let's turn on a light to really illuminate the smoke coming out of the barrel. Thank you. Look at that. That's amazing. We could have never achieved effects this realistic in the past. So this is what we call heterogeneous volumes. In the past, effects like these would be done with particle sprites, but that's kind of a cheat that often breaks down and can look flat. It's nice from afar, but far from nice, as we say <laughs> back in the UK. Um, so if we look at the glow in, of the fire on, as it dynamically illuminates the volumetric smoke, you can see that, that light transmitting through the volume. You can also see that the smoke itself is sh casting shadows onto the world, but also itself. These volumetrics can also mix with more traditional effects as well. So if you do want to put particles in there, fog, or even cards, you can do it. It all works in a, in a unified way. You can run the simulation, the, the smoke simulation, in Unreal Engine natively if you want, or you can import open VDB datasets as sparse volume textures, resulting in film quality visual effects, volumetric visual effects, all running in real time that total, are totally responsible to responsive to dynamic lighting. Yeah, and it, it, it just looks incredible. Now, uh, of course, all of this is just to help us tell our story, right? And the story is nothing without great characters. So let's head back over to the bridge and catch up with Cap. Now, an essential part of any character's persona, particularly a Marvel hero, is their look. And it can be really distracting if the outfit doesn't look as realistic and believable as the rest of the world. As you can see, Cap's leather uniform fits just like you'd expect in real life, with all the correct material properties and the complexity of creases forming as he moves. From a technical perspective, this is where we can effectively utilize machine learning. We can set up and run complex simulations in a package like Houdini and import that data into UE. We then use this to train an ML model producing film quality deformations that run in real time. But None of this matters without great facial performances. So let's bring Azuri, T'Challa's grandfather, and our Black Panther into this scene, this time with his mask off. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. And as he pauses here, Roman, why don't you go in really close and really show everybody the detail that we have in these models. Um, it's, it's insane, right? It's like, amazing. Uh, it's essential for us to retain every nuance of the outstanding performance that our actor, Kari Payton, brought to Azuri's character. What you just saw there were untouched metahuman animator solves. Mm -hmm. So working with the metahuman process, we've been able to honor our amazing actor's performances and faithfully transform them into equally powerful digital performances. Now, of course, it all starts with the actor's talent, and we're fortunate to have two of our cast with us in the audience today. So I'd like to introduce Drew Morline, who plays Captain America. Yay! <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Kari Payton, our Black Panther. See, they hug, they're friends. They're not really fighting. It's, it's all good. Um, and of course, I want to take this opportunity to thank them and the rest of our wonderful cast for going on this incredibly crazy journey with us. Uh, and now, as a special treat, uh, let's take a look at the entire bridge scene that you saw earlier. But this time, we'll keep Azuri's mask off to really showcase what we can do when all this incredible talent and all these amazing features come together. But remember, 
This is running entirely in real time. Awesome. That's far enough! I'm here on the business of the United States government. Yours is not the only business here. Stay out of my way. Stand aside. I do not take orders from anyone. Turn around, boy. Go home. Look, pal, I don't know who you are. But I know who you are, Captain. America's hero, dancing around in red, white, and blue underwear. Says the man dressed like an overgrown house cat. That shield that you hide behind does not belong to you. You are unworthy of it. I don't have time for this. Neither do I. In Satara, there are six distinct combat classes and 18 weapons. All classes can manipulate space and time, giving players a unique battle experience. Players can travel through space and go to designated time zones to gain advantage during thrilling battles. Data layer 기능을 사용하여 로딩 없이 실시간으로 변하는 과거, 현재, 미래의 세테라 월드를 구현하였고, 이를 통해 We've used data layers to create real-time environments and layer them on top of one another to enable players to travel through past, present, and future states of the Cetera landscape seamlessly. Players can gain additional resources through traveling to the past and fight against stronger enemies in the future. In this instance, we're traveling from the present to the future. World Partition 기능을 사용하여 12제곱 킬로미터 이상의 랜드스케이프 약 50만 개 액터를 구현하였고 이를 통해 게이머분들은 친구들과 함께 자유로운 월드 탐험의 재미를 느낄 수 있습니다. World Partition allows us to efficiently create a massive open world exceeding 12 square kilometers with about a half million actors and then stream it smoothly to enhance the cinematic look and feel of the environment all while allowing for multiplayer adventures. 극도로 자유로운 커스터마이징 기능을 통해 수많은 유저가 자신의 개성을 표현하며 게임을 즐길 수 있도록 구현하였습니다. And finally, through our extremely flexible customization system, players can freely express their personality by creating their character, ensuring that each character you meet in Satera is as unique as your own.
Don't get your guns wet. hero bestowed with immense power, a nefarious wielder of great magic, a conqueror of monsters. <laughs> now is the time to take your place among the worthy. Forge bombs, Gather allies. Fulfill your destiny. Go forth, Arisen. Follow thy heart to seek the truth. I still can't believe you went. What are you thinking? Going to that place. Wish you hadn't got yourself into this mess, but you did. You can't run forever. I know you were just trying to do right by me, so I need you to do what's right by us. Now, please, Cass. I am so tired of fighting. I just want it to be over. I want you home. The girls want you home. But if you don't deal with this, then we are done for good. I love you. But I won't wait forever.
beat? So, check this out. So that's where the magic happens, huh? I'm Chai, by the way. Music player in my chest. It's powering up my new robot arm. It's making everything sync up with the beat. Let's rock. That's the beat. We'll take down this company. One boss at a time. But just so you know, they're insane. I'm here, baby. Is this the guy? You ready for more? You've got a killer track, but every song's gotta end. Outsmart them. I'm like a chameleon waiting to strike. I'm glad you're here. The crew's been waiting for you, and we're ready to help you build what's next. Come on, let's go. Petty Humans are now available for import into UEFN as non-player characters. <clears throat> Thank you. So, Michael's jumped us back into the editor so we can get a look at our captain behind the scenes. As you can see, we carefully optimized for both quality and efficiency. We've gone from almost one gig for a hero metahuman down to approximately 60 megs in UEFN with an average complexity hairstyle. And we wanted to make this process as easy as possible. You just save your custom metahumans in the metahuman creator. This captain character was based on the Rue metahuman preset. Once you have your creations saved in my metahumans, they'll be available to you in our new metahuman importer in UEFN. And depending on your project's requirements, there are also multiple quality options for you to choose from. Now, we can't talk about metahumans without also addressing the workflow creators use for creating costumes. There are many ways to author clothing, but in this case, we're using Marvelous Designer, a leading digital clothing software. In fact, we worked with our friends at Clo, the makers of Marvelous Designer and Clo 3 d to integrate our metahuman body data into their software and provide a new USD export option for your garments. That export includes geometry, materials, and the data you need for simulation setup. Now on screen, you're seeing the garment that was exported from Marvelous Designer being brought into the cloth panel editor in UE 5.4, and from there, we're setting up custom chaos simulations that have realistic cinema quality looks. As part of this tech in the upcoming UE 5.4, we're introducing an auto sim setup that has sim data and ingest, auto LOD generation, and auto skinning. In addition, you always have the option to take a more bespoke approach like we have here if you want more iterations and finer control. Okay, cloth physics are available in UEFN as early access starting today, and now we'd like to show you how easy it is to dress a metahuman character. Michael's gonna demonstrate this for us live in the UEFN editor. All right, take it away, Michael. Thanks, Pat. So the first thing we're going to do is hide the default outfit that came in from MetaHuman Creator. Next, we'll add a new uh, Chaos Cloth component. This allows us a place to drop our new dynamic uh, cloth object. This was actually created in Marvelous Designer, set up in UE 5.4, and imported here into UEFN. Now that we have that, let's uh, add a new animation so we can see how the cloth moves. And we come down to the cloth, turn on simulate, and just like that, we have moving cloth here inside UEFN. <laughs> All right, cool. So from there, our metahuman's ready to be used in the game. And we're really excited to offer cloth physics in UEFN for the first time. It's so important for creating convincing characters. And you're not limited to clothing on characters. You can use cloth physics anywhere in your environment. At last year's State of Unreal, you saw the power of MetaHuman Animator in UE, and we're pleased to say that those same tools are now available to creators in UEFN. 
And don't forget, using our latest character device, you can also add a performance to some of your favorite Fortnite characters. You might have seen this in the recent Joke Night experience produced by Trevor Noah. For getting capture data into UEFN, we recommend using our new LiveLink Hub application. This allows almost all capture devices that can stream to UE5 to also stream directly into UEFN and get recorded there. Even more third-party devices will be supported in LiveLink Hub soon. What's next for the Talisman is really up to you as creators. It's just one example of the many worlds that you might be dreaming of building for your next game. We've presented a workflow you can use to make compelling characters and a much clearer path for dynamic clothing. Really excited to see what comes next. Metahumans as NPCs and cloth physics are available in UEFN today, and the Talisman uh, environment is playable in our booth here at GDC. It'll be released as a template soon. An eternity it spent playing out in the tortured halls of my mind. Mentors, friends, and lover alike turn against you. Whatever end we meet, it has been a delight to compose the song of change together. I'm Matthew Wood. I'm Animation Director on Flintlock. Flintlock is a Souls Light RPG where you play as Noor with your companion Enki, a little fox character, taking on great gods. Building on from Ashen, we've tried to go more Souls Light, so we do that by increasing the mobility options and increasing the pace of combat. We're trying to make things more dynamic and hopefully make it more accessible to new players to the Souls genre as well as players from action RPGs. Um, the combat in Flintlock is all rhythm-based, um, which from animations I mentioned, you would be able to feel the rhythm through the through the animation. So every nine frames is like a beat. So you're able to make sure that the, the player can understand when the next attack's going to come and we have react accordingly. I think my favorite animation for Nora is just like her basic moveset, combining her axe attacks with her gun attacks, and then also mixing that in with strafing with rifles. Um, some of the traversal options in game would be like jumping, double jumping, dodging, air dodging, sliding down hills, inky rift traveling and being able to like chain between those. Once you get an enemy down to enough health in a fight then you can execute a glory kill, either axe or pistol. It's good to find out with the glory kills, they're usually the more like, complicated choreographed moves and the ones where you get to take control of the camera to really control the framing of the action as well. As well at times, 
but we definitely wanted Enki to feel like he was a companion alongside you as you navigate the navigate the world, doing all your jumping and your sliding. So trying to keep him in frame to slide alongside you or jump alongside you. Darling Arna, when the ship crashed, I half wondered if life as we knew it would collapse in on itself as well. It seemed like the pressure of the ocean surrounding us was pressing through the ship's hull, and I wondered how I, how any of us, would find a new way to keep going on. There aren't many people I can talk to without feeling inferior. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean like that. You just... You're not a Jimmy Judger, you know? You seem to just accept. Hmm. I try. It could be worse. But there must be more. More to life. Is that not a computer? opens a whole box of questions. Actually, I did kind of make a mistake. We all make them, Harold. Ah! Who? What? So... We're sorry to put the burden on you, Harold. But you're the next best man for the job. I... Yes! I mean, yes. down here. It scares you, doesn't it? It's been a long time since I've attempted to persuade anyone of my intentions. Most of the people here have already made their minds up about me one way or another.
is even a most prime team. You keep up with me, kid? This is the true might of a Super Saiyan strength! A mindless beast like you is nothing but prey to a warrior of love! You're my prey! How many ladies are all around me? I'm old, yes, but experienced. Founder of the Turtle School, creator of the sacred technique. Well then, let playtime begin. Whether it's this universe or another, I'm always the fastest. Don't think I'm gonna follow your orders for the rest of my life. Size means nothing when you're as quick as me. Justice prevails. Evil erased. This rampaging monster must be taught a lesson! Come on, my ear again, you! Get your together! I am not going to be left in the dust! Let's do it a purple! this up quickly. Don't think you can enter my crosshairs and just walk away. You cannot win. Good grief. Looks like we've awakened a real bona fide monster. was a proposal that together you could save the planet it's not about the distant hope of creating a new world it's about preserving the one we have oh Eloy have you learned nothing about the enemy we're up against in the west war is the rule peace the exception. Get the cover! I condemn you to death! Everywhere I look, things are falling apart. We're coming with you. In a world where robots must be destroyed, one man with an abundance of weapons must blast his way through hordes of oil-thirsty droids. Alongside a bear with a husky voice and an insatiable hunger for honey. As this unlikely pair teams up to battle the odds and destroy all that stands in their way, fans around the world have shown their excitement.
from the lead artist of the Forgotten City and two other guys. Get ready to rip and paw. Embrace the carnage between bear and robot. Experience the adventure of a lifetime. Coming this March, brace yourselves for the intergalactic event of the century. Bears in Space. Yo, dog! We doing this? I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy. Am I right? She has that heartwood gloom, doesn't she? I heard you're trying to break Jeremy's promise to the Dark Man. Emily? What are you doing sneaking around? I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually I don't... I don't think so. What on earth is happening? Where am I? Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. Is any of this real? He's in my head, Juan. You'll have to run, Emily! You'll have to run! My God! Don't leave me alone. There must be something I can work with. Come on, Carnby, think. Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Carnby. You should know that by now. I did everything he wanted. What else can I do? Today, the American Expeditionary Forces face considerable John. losses in France. I think I've lost my head. The brave men. Oh, John. I am sorry. I can't do this. What's the matter, Emily? Lies. More lies. Spring! Wait!
Hi, everyone. We want to show you something we've been working on. It's not the Callisto Protocol 2. It's our take on a super fast action roguelike, and we're calling it Project Bird's Eye. The team at Striking Distance is having a lot of fun working on this alongside our next AAA game. Let us know what you think.